So I have started, man. Thank you. Uh, welcome to uh, another forum of C Stand Up. This is my podcast, man. I have had the opportunity right now and been long time coming. I've been hoping, I tried to do it a little while ago, but everything fell apart. I am talking now to the phenom that has held the black community uh, in comedy together. You and a couple other good brothers are the reason why our scene is still alive. The the uh, famous and infamous B. Cole. Everybody clap, you know. <laughs> That's what, thank you, man, uh, for for uh, for participating in this, brother. Appreciate you, I, man. Absolutely, man. You know, me and you, we go way back, brother. So just it's just a phone call for me, man. That's absolutely. All. With that, with that being said, man, first of all, I like to give people their flowers before they, you know, before they pass away. Like, you know, so. I want to say, man, you were the first dude to ever take me on the road. You blessed me in, um, uh, in my mind, into the comedy game, man. Um, you have a lot of people that can be considered your minions or people that you have um, mentored, even if you don't know it, man. So I want to say thank you very much, sir. And uh, I love you as a brother, you know, and keep yeah, going with yeah. you. Let me ask you, Foss, what, what, what was that city we went to, man? That first it was city actually we went Peoria. To. It was Peoria. Okay. We did uh, Captain DJ or somebody like that. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. DJ, DJ, yeah. DJ yeah. Captain, that's my dude. And um, the home of Richard Pryor, man. That was yeah. the first yeah. road trip for you. It goes right to the home of the Mecca. That, that was the first road trip. And, and I was so green in the game that I, you know, you know how um, you, you have to know this. I, I experienced it too, where because you've been on stage and people have been watching you, they think they know you. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and you had put, you had let me ride with you to the event. And I think it was my car though. You know what I'm saying? So like, oh, yeah. uh, we drove oh, to yeah. the- if, if, look, if you're going on the road with me, you driving and um, yeah. um, off the gas too. You doing all exactly, the exactly. No, I was green. I knew what it was, but I was like, you know, I said, to you, and it was the only mistake that I've ever truly regretted when it comes to you is I said, hey, Brian, man, something, something, something. And you looked at me like, hey, we've been around each other this long, and you still don't know my name is Brandle. And you had said, my name is Brandle, like I had offended you. And I was like, oh, I just heard, you know, I just heard myself saying that because I, you know, yeah. I, I really didn't know you know you, but it was that uh, from the stage, older comic. Uh, being watched by the younger comic thing and, and our brains work in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So we think we know people, man. Well, but I mean, you know, then. everybody everybody always takes the guess of the B without even asking first. And man, yeah. I heard so many crazy B names, but um, <laughs> no one can ever expect Brando. When I tell them it's Brando, like, it's, it's, very, it's a very rare name. So yeah. when I just say Brando, it's like, it's Brando with a B right in front. It's Brando with a B. Brand. I know. So, so for yeah, that, I apologize, like but we way beyond that anyway. You didn't oh, yeah, really notice it uh, at the time, but it was one of them things that I felt, man, I, I know better than that, man. I, you know, but whatever. So anyway, man, let's get, let's get into you and your life. Cause that, that's very known to, you know, some story behind me, man. So yes, sir. the people that uh, get to see my thing, sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's not a lot, but whatever it is, man, I appreciate you. I want, um, I know some of it, but I'm going to fish it out of you for the sake of this. So where was the first time you actually fell in love with comedy? Um, I did um, South Shore Culture Center was my first performance. Is like, that you know, right? right there. Yeah, right there. It's the South Shore Culture Center. And actually, I was, uh, they had this thing called the studio an event they had going on every Friday it was called the studio. It was an open mic. And it was like, that's why I met a lot of, a lot of the players in the game. I met Alan Edge. Um, Alan Edge was like a heavy hitter there. He was the headliner. Yeah, I remember all them names. <laughs> yeah, better, better. Yeah. And then um, you had, um, then um, my man Spanky, Spanky. Um, hey. Uh, he just not, not Spanky Hayes. He just went by Spank. Spank, I forgot his Spanky last name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, him, my man Budski, um, it, it just comedians. I'm trying to remember. We all started together, and then um, then they had some singer singing acts the whole night. But I was performing there for like six weeks straight, and also Godfrey. Godfrey was there too. When I first performed, my first time on stage there, 
Godfrey was um, an act on the on the lineup with me, but Godfrey was part of a, a, a comedy team. duo. Yeah. He was a team. Yeah. It was like Godfrey wasn't solo at first. It was him and Alex it's called Godfrey and Alex. Right. And my first time performing after attending there for like two weeks prior, just to scope the scene, I um I got on stage that third week. And I think I went behind Godfrey and Alex, and man, I just went. I just knew I had confidence in my first joke, my very first joke I had. Right. Uh, man, and it was 1991, Black Friday, Black Friday, 1991. Okay. And uh, my very first joke was just like, "Yo, I'm a young black man, just finished college. Give it up for a black man doing that." And then you know, people, you know, I'm young. I'm like 18, 19 years old. So everybody black. like give me that. They give me that, like, dog, oh, this man finished college, that's vacation, you know. Then I just come out with, well, I ain't graduate, just finished going. And then that's it. So people laughed at that. And then, like I said, like, when I got that first laugh, yeah. I, you know, it's easy breezy from there, just, you know, bring in my other material. And it worked. I only had, like, three minutes, three to five minutes, though. That's all. But yeah. it was a great first performance. And a lot of comedians – can say that, but it's a lot of comedians who perform for the first time and they struggle with, you know, but it's all a learning process from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I've i seen that quite often, man. It's, and what's crazy is, is one part of your story uh, I remember, man, is that you were, you blew up so quick because you got on that Def Jam thing. Was it Def Jam or, Com yeah, it was Def Jam at the time, man. And, and everybody was like, oh, be cold, well, no, be cold. It, it, I remember it was actually, that. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, no, it was, it was actually Comic View. Okay. It was Comic View. And Comic, you know, Def Jam, Def Jam was going on. And then, um, you know, Def Jam used to come through. This, this is the time when, TV shows and the producers used to actually come to town to scout. It was no videotape send in. There was no, you know what I'm saying? It was no audition, you know, other than in your own city because they would fly to town right. and they would have a group of people, uh, a group of comedians in the lineup, the best in the city, and they had their shoes from there. And Comic View did it. And Comic View came to town and it was like 20 comedians. The audition was at the comedy clip. And it was 20 comedians on the roster. And the thing with that, I um, I think I was the youngest on there. Yeah. And I was the only, and it's like, I got chosen out of that 20 and one more person, it was just me and Robert Hine. We both got chosen. And so we went to Comic View and that's, that's when it started for me. I think I was probably like, I just made 20 years old. My first time out of Chicago, my first time on a plane, my first time in California, my first time on TV. Everything was a first for me in that journey, you know? So uh, it, it, was, it was love. It was love. I did it. And I think I did it um, the, the next season after that before I took a three-year hiatus by choice because it was like I, I got I to develop as an artist. So I took off from Comic View. Oh, no. Can you hear me? Okay, hear I got me? you now. Now I do. Now I do. I ain't catch the beginning of that. I was going to say, I was saying, um, I was a DJ back then, but my point is, is, man, we were incredibly proud of you, bro. Everybody was like, man, that dude, you know what I'm saying? He, repping, yeah. plus he was repping Chicago, really. You know what I'm saying? So we loved it, man. And I, it, that's where everybody yeah. fell in love with you, bro. Mm -hmm. And, you know, which is cool, too, but at the same time, thinking back in hindsight that, um, you know, I should have really waited <laughs> and not taken that job because that was an opportunity for the ones who've been putting the work in for years. Granted, I've been doing comedy for a year and got that opportunity. Yeah. And it's like I came out, you know, doing doing my, you know, doing the best that I can do where uh, I did seem like a, a seasoned and experienced comedian. So... Right. Yeah, that's that's what got me chosen. But at the same time, it was, it was a lot of cats on that lineup, man, who, who deserved the opportunity as well, and been putting the you know the time in, like you know, such as James Hanna, Duran Howard, Shay Shay, yeah. you know, say all them cats, Tony Schofield, right? You know, so it's just like 
I kind of felt a little guilty about it, you know. <laughs> but um, you know, when 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 it's, when it's your time, it's your time. But at the same time, you have to make choices. Yeah. You have to you you have to you have to make the, the right choices for yourself. And so sometimes, you know, what's good right in your face right there may not be your exact time for it. But you gotta you gotta know that, you know. But uh, I, I can I can get further in that and telling you why I felt that it wasn't my my time to go. Well, you know what, man? I'm I'm one of those people who believe when it when it's your time, it's gonna happen because the universe has it set up. And I don't think, uh, yeah. you know, I, I know that as a wiser man, you say I could have been more prepared because maybe something different might have happened. I guess that's where you're going. But right. thank you very much. But I think um, it happened when it was supposed to happen, man. And every, there's nothing that's happening uh, in in the space that we live where it, it isn't supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I personally thank you for doing for taking the journey that you have, man. And speaking of that journey, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, okay. Yeah, so, it, 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 and it was a good journey. It's just that um, it's not over. You know, like it's not over. But but the the minute the minute I was on television, I was touring. You know, like yeah. you know when they see you on that TV, I was saying, they, remember, I'm just a year in, but now I'm traveling around the country now, and this is television without internet, without social media. So right. the, once you've seen on that that box. Mm -hmm. You were instantly famous, you know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. all they did. So therefore, um, yeah. So therefore, when I when I was traveling around the country, man, I, I was I was struggling. I was they just put they just headlining me. I was yeah. headlining. Yeah, was I was right. yeah. And, and dude, I had like 15, 20 minutes or so, and I think I didn't cross almost every city until the, the next year when the Comic View invited me back. I was like. Nah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wait, you okay. know, and I, I waited, I, I waited three years. Yeah. And then that's when I, when I came back after three years, that's when you start seeing the, I'm in love with a crackhead, the, 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 the gang bangers on the street pole in the wind. And yeah. you saw all that stuff that I developed in them three years, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. It, and those are some of the, uh, iconic jokes that, uh, Chicago, the Chicago scene and the sh people in right. Chicago and around the country love and know you for fantastic. Even you, you even made a movie out of I'm in love with a crackhead with a bunch of the Chicago cast in it. Right. So, you know, right. um, and that's where I think we should go with this conversation, man. Um, you and I had a, had a little brief Facebook interaction about writing, man, and you've been such a voracious writer. Uh, you one of the main cats who kind of inspired me to even write down the movie and play and TV ideas that I've had, you know what I'm saying? So speak on that and the value of it. Well, the thing is, um, being a, as a comic, you start off as being a writer, a good comic writer, regardless, you know, you're going to write your bits, you're going to write your bits beginning, middle and end. You're going to put that into a routine. You're going to put it into an act, an act of full written material, bring them jokes back as a callback to show, just to show your brilliance in writing. Like, as a comedian, you have your opportunity to show the industry how great of a writer you are just by being on that stage doing that material. Now, you get comedians who get up there, go off the cuff. They, um, they, they more physical with their comedy, stuff like that, the whole nine. So it's a lot of them comedians who does, who does like, like, strictly write, like, write a joke, yeah. you know? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because there's lanes for everywhere. But in my case, like I said, it was just important for me to show the industry like how great of a writer I am just from the stage. Right. You know, and, and you can tell it like comedians who I see and comedians who I like, I, I like them off the back when I be like I hear they jokes, I'm like, yeah, this dude, he's a writer. He's a yeah, he's a good writer. So um, it, it, it's, it's that respect for the game, really, just putting your time in and coming up with some brilliant stuff. But the writing is important. Um, and I always wanted to do film. I always wanted to do a movie. Yeah. But I was, I, was, um, I was inspired to do a movie because I was auditioning for films. I was auditioning for films. I got put off films. And it was just like, in my film industry, I was like, feeling kind of, you know, had no, like, like, kind of no confidence because I was getting told no all the time. You know, I, it was 
movies that came across like Three Strikes. It was movie like Three Strikes. I actually had the role for Three Strikes. Um, and, you know, it was about DJ Pooh. DJ Pooh did the movie, right? This come after Friday for him. Yeah. And I, it was Faison Love in it, Brian Hooks, and uh, a lot of other people. But I was up for the role to be the guy who picks him up from jail because he, I pick him up from jail, then um, that's all I remember. I, I, I don't even remember if I saw the movie. Right. But I had I was up for that role, but didn't get it. Uh, me and Dion Cole, we auditioned for Barbershop together. We was in Barbershop, and me and Dion auditioned for the role of um, Anthony Anderson and Lamar Tate when they stole the uh, ATM. Okay. You know? yeah. So we were up for that, right. So we were up for that role. We didn't get it, and um, Dion got a, a, a small speaking role in that movie, and then they moved me to an extra. So yeah. when they moved to an extra, so I did my extra role. I did, I did a few days on there. And um, at that point, I was just like, you know what? I'm about to go ahead and just do my own movie. Yeah. Let me just, you know, let me let me tiptoe off this set and go create me a set. And then that's when I got together and did I'm in love with a crackhead. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And you've, you've uh, flourished and created beyond those two early pieces. Um, and if people want to see those, they can, I think they're still on YouTube somewhere. You know, yeah, can, yeah, go, yeah. Go to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can see uh, I'm in love with the crackhead, the movie, my very first film. Uh, <laughs> my, my YouTube channel is Be Cold Films. Just put in Be Cold Films all, all together, then it'll go right there. Awesome, awesome, man. And you gave me my first uh, actual speaking role in the one that you uh, headlined or centered around Damon, who is another phenomenal, Damon Williams, who's another phenomenal yeah. um, personality in Chicago that kind of held the scene together when we when our scene was dropping. Because after all jokes, after jokes, all jokes aside, left. There was the, a big void on the, you know, in, within the community, and people don't understand how segregated Chicago is. So there was right. no real official great place to perform for black comics. I think maybe, and because the, um, no, I was about to say the click, but the click had been died by then because they had that big, uh, that big death right. situation. And so, right, exactly. Yeah, and so you, so after I, that, I mean, you, you had, you had like. We had Riddle's Comedy Club, um, which we only had a black night there. It was Sunday, like, yeah. and V-Ray put that together and yeah. was very successful with it. it. Had great comedians come through, and that's where a lot of comedians got started at too, as well. Yeah, but that, like after, after all jokes aside, that's really all we had because the click was gone, and like I said, that's when the um, we got to back doing rooms, bars, and. And Giovanni's and stuff like that. Giovanni, yeah. Giovanni's one of them. That was one of the greatest, man, hosted by Marlon Mitchell. Yeah. And with that, saying that, um, um, we were doing that until Mary Lindsay opened up Jokes and No. Yeah. You know, when, when, when Mary did that, that's when the big, that, that, that was like the Walmart of comedy. Walmart came in and knocked, knocked out all the mom pop shows, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was just yeah. like, it was like everybody was going to jump to notes now and stuff like that. So yeah. all the little lounge and club shows that we were doing, um, it was very rare of them doing because also Mary let it be known like, hey, you know, if you do shows elsewhere, you know, don't, you know, you can't come perform here. Yeah, you no know, so a lot of, but a lot of comics honored that, and a lot of comics were, you know, just being dedicated to a club without a doubt. You know, but at the same time. So, uh, being, uh, uh oh, you know, so those, those little side jobs, those little jobs like that, those was like little hustling side gigs, you know. Right, and it, it's little places like that that keep the uh, keep the whole scene alive, um, and the goal should be somewhere like. Um, jokes and notes and i think mary in the end of her scene uh end of her tenure there kind of got that because the more those other comics use other places the better they are when they come to her place and then they bring other people which is one of the oh, yeah uh, yeah which is one of the other aspects that i'd like to um I'd like to explore with you man because one of my biggest bones and i think one of my biggest um hurdles or thorns in my career was that 
Um, you had cats like yourself, even if you go further, Bernie Mac, uh, Damon Williams on some levels, but um, D. Ray Davis, all of these guys were, uh, you guys were fantastic comedians with followings. And then you had a, a, a theater or a place like Zany's, which would not, it did not embrace black comedians thoroughly until about last year when they, I think this Brian Morton dude is going to um, open it up a little bit better. But wow. I understood and I was able to get in there periodically. You know, they would have one black dude per month. I got to do it a couple years, you know what I'm saying? Once a year, twice, you know what I mean? That type of thing. Or they would put you on these little Monday night rooms and stuff like that. Right. But, and see, and like, Paul, that's why I, I was proud of you at right there because you've done something. You've come into the game after a lot of us. Yeah. Uh, because you are you are a DJ. You was the comedy DJ at All Jokes Aside. Right. So you come out, right? So you come out of there uh, and, and into the comedy field. But you know, we all just like you know, we all taking it like Aaron, a comedian, oh, God, whatever. Exactly. You know, yeah, but, that was a big hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, you left you left our arena. Because, yeah. like you said, Chicago is a very segregated city. Like in, especially in the comedy game, you know, you got the North Side and the South Side. Right. And you migrated to the North Side, and we started hearing your name on the South Side from the North Side. And Cash is like, Aaron, what? Like Aaron up there doing it. Aaron doing shows. He, he man, like you know, he's like, I went up there, man. Them, them comedians respect them. They love them. like what, Aaron? Like yeah, so. The thing with that is like you've done something that we weren't, we didn't even put the work in to do. Not saying we weren't capable of doing it, yeah. but we just didn't bother to put the work in to do. And that is to get uh, into the industry side of town. Like, because granted, North Side is the, the industry side of town. Yeah. You know, especially when even CBS now. come to town when, you know, you got Second City up there. When, when Comedy Central come to town, when all these networks come to town, they don't go past Roosevelt to go south. Right. You know, they stay north because that's where they're scouting for mainstream comedians, comedians for network television. And you were in that arena, and we was like, wow. Like, Aaron got better opportunity than we got. Aaron made opportunity for himself. Yeah. See, we was on the south side hustling. We was making money. And that's the, that's the south side, that's the hustle side of town, where you get your money on. You ain't making no money up north. You know what I'm saying? You just, the, the thing you're doing up north is you, you, you really rubbing a lot of elbows and getting your name known up there. So when, when they do come to town and when they want to know who's the man in Chicago, you yeah. want your name at the top of that list. Well, and they're like, yeah, well, shit, be cold. Y'all need to see this guy. Yeah. That's who they coming to see. You know, so you were up there doing that, bro. You was making making a name for yourself on the side of town that we all wanted to really be on, but we didn't want to go through the whole rigmarole when we already went through it on the south side and getting up and getting to the top of the chain, making our money. Yeah. We was, you know, we we was living, we was we was living the the the, the rock star life. You know what I'm saying? We was doing that. But yeah. I wish I'd gotten up north a much, a, a lot much sooner, though. Yeah, well, man, I, I thank you for the praise, but it was more like necessity because I had been, I had had so much success as that in that DJ realm because, remember, I was the first DJ to, to do um, uh, Rodman's um, venue, and they started to put me in DJing mode across the town. But... Everybody was treating okay. me like everybody was treating me like a punk on the comedy. So they like, get out of here, man. You ain't no comic. You a DJ. And so I was feeling re I'm not used to being right. disrespected. You know what I'm saying? I was a I was a basketball star. Girls like me. I was like, these dudes are trying to punk me. Man, I don't like this. So I right. went up there and right. I, you know, and it was natural for me to be up there because remember I went I lived over there and I went to Lincoln Park High School. So I didn't have no oh, wow. issues okay. being over there. And okay. uh, it just worked out for me. But I still... Wow, so that's... 
Go go ahead, go ahead. You can interrupt. It's your. No, I'm, I'm gonna say that that's good. I, I didn't know that you lived up north and already. So you are already familiar with the north side, familiar with north side uh, yeah. uh, social social life up there and everything. You know, it's yeah. a different it's a different world from the south side. You Absolutely. know, uh, Absolutely. even the West Side, even the West Side, West Side produced some good comedians from Chicago, yeah. but it just wasn't a, any um, opportunity for comedians on their side of town. So they come to the South Side and get, you know, like Lil Rail, Lil Rail from the West Side, but Lil Rail hung out South Side and that's why he cut his teeth in and got his skills up and became known. Right. But it's always been North and South Side. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, the South Side, man, it's like, um, you know, we, we were there just really just putting the work in, man. And, you know, we were, we were trying to, you know, do the, the black show, Death Comedy Jam, the PDD Bad Boys of Comedy, First Amendment and all that. So they were coming to the South Side. And Russell Simmons opened that door because, right, because Russell Simmons didn't want to go to the industry side of town. No side. He said, I want to go to the hood. I want to find... The I want to find the you know guy. I want to yeah. find the 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 girl. I want to find you know who bring the real, and that's when he found Bernie Mac. Well, that's you his know? niche. That was his niche. He you that know, was his niche. Was you know, yeah, he comes he comes from hip hop. You know, he's one yeah. of the creators. Yeah. So therefore, therefore, when he found Bernie Mac, of course, everybody want to know Chicago dish out a lot of great comedians. So. Right. They always came to Chicago to look for comics. So the South Side comedians, we were we we were good. We were yeah. good. We like, man, we don't need mainstream. We don't need all that. You know right. what I'm saying? We got our own we got our own industry right here, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I I I would I would have loved to have been a part of that, man. It's just that by the time I started to flourish, there was no need for me right. to go over there. But I always came and hung out with my brothers from that side. You know, I was always around. It's just that I, I my stage wasn't, uh, I wasn't always, I don't know. It, I just didn't get, I didn't get uh, the stage love or the opportunities, but I was okay with it because I had my own stuff. But let's not right. talk about me, man. I want to talk about you. But, but no, but I mean, but this is very important because the thing is, it's important to do both and know both, both sides. And yeah. see, I was strictly South Side. So when I first started going North Side, I was, I was, my psyche was messed up. Because when I was going South Side, and when I was going to the North Side, I was, I was cleaning up my act. I was being more articulate. I wasn't being myself. Right. Because now I'm in a room full of white people and feel like, yo, I gotta, you know, I gotta change up where I felt uncomfortable of, of North. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna be. Uh, <laughs> being up here doing that until I had to uh, learn just to how to just remain self, yeah. be myself regardless, uh, it don't matter. So I started doing that, going up north and just like, yo, man, this is me, I, you know, because I'm not going to restrict myself from getting on this side of town by me being uncomfortable. So what I had to do, I had to like, yo, I'm going to be myself, either y'all going to love it or not. And then I started going up north and uh, get you know started getting recognized, getting my name you know on that side of town up. But the person who really bridged that gap for a lot of black comedians from the south side to the north side, we got to shout out Curtis, my man Curtis Shaw, and the uh, you know manager over at uh, Laugh Factor. So Curtis did bridge a, a gap uh, as far as booking. Uh, Southside comedians in a mainstream club. So you're you know, talking like two, 2015, right? You're talking like 2015, 2016, 2017, yeah, that type of stuff? Yeah, exactly. exactly. But before that, I know yeah, I've been up north because you brought me up north. You know, you brought me up north a few times. So I, I built that, what you just said. I built that. Curtis, oh, yeah. Was, Curtis, yeah. The story goes into the, it like this. Uh, you remember I had rooms from like 2002 until I got with the Laugh Factory. Um, so okay, when the Laugh right. Factory when the Laugh Factory first came to um, the 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 city, they had the bad business model. So what they would do is they would hire 
B to C comedians like Jamie Kennedy, they would give him a full door deal uh, or, or they would pay him a, a minimum of like $7,500. But they didn't know how to market in Chicago. Chicago is a fishbowl that you have to market a certain way. You have to bring it uh, and be known and you have to draw. So my small draws, okay. um, I, kept, I got in there and started to create those shows, especially the Nasty Show, which was the show I built. Curtis was That's the- the show. That's, That was my first show booked on, the Nasty Show, right. with you. Exactly, yeah. I, yeah. I kicked that door open. I fought tooth and nail to get those people to stop being prejudiced and allow y'all to get in there. You know what I mean? So Curtis at that time was not the, um, he was not really involved. He was like the social media dude. He was the DJ at that time up there. Okay. I I and, okay. And controversial interactions between me and the second manager, and he he you know did what he did to try to. I, I guess he was trying to buffer it, but of course he got to go with his job side, right? Instead of there's no reason for him okay. to to be on my side. But eventually, because of that, because of that, um, the Laugh Factory stayed. They were about to close their doors because they couldn't pay for their rent with, with 35 people in the audience. I'm gonna make it brief. Uh, from there, me and sure. Emily, because Ma me and Maggie built it, Emily was the one who came in the middle. I feel like she had some jealousy over the fact that I was helping the place flourish she didn't like me. We didn't like each other. And me, her, and Curtis mm -hmm. clashed. So, of course, they're going to get rid of me. They stole my show. They stole the nasty show from me. But I get it. I understand why. It's business, right? They're not going to stop the, the show that's yeah. paying the bills. Okay. But at that time, me and Curtis mm -hmm. talked. And I taught Curtis not only how to market the play uh, the shows, and he may not he may deny this, mm -hmm. but I also showed him the value of the talent on the south side because it was actually stronger than the talent on the north side, even on the north side. Oh, wow, check that out. And wow, so check from that there, out. check I, that out, man. Yes. So he's been flourishing, man, and I'm proud of him. You know, he and I probably one day need yeah. to have beer and talk about the pain that happened. Cause like when Dave Chappelle said that stuff the other day, I felt like they did that to me. Like the, the laugh actor did that to me. Wow. Uh, so, so I understood Dave's pain because I went through, it, right? But now I the got recognition- you. I got you. Yeah, and, you know, and, and when- So I'm gonna stop well, talking was, right there on that. Cause that's- <laughs> Well, no, yeah. I mean, and the thing is, like I said, just like, I know what you've done up until like 2015 to that point, and it was great to pass that baton over to um, Curtis, and it's great that Curtis continued because that's when he started booking a lot of the younger comics. There's a lot of younger comics that's at that club, doing that club that you know wasn't around when you were, you know, bring a lot of the comics that, um, through. So yeah, but so he's still continuing, and that's a good thing because he didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was an awesome thing. It was an awesome yeah. thing. And I, I'm I'm yeah, happy for him and I'm proud of him. I just uh I just know that I haven't been I haven't felt welcome there in a long time. But recently, he and I have had some conversations that okay. you know, I'm when it back when it opened back up, I'm gonna start coming up there again. Just yeah. put it back. when it opened up, I'm yeah, start yeah, definitely. Back. But again, we're not here to talk about me. <laughs> you keep you keep tricking me. <laughs> <laughs> these, these things, but it's you know it's all good. So you got an interesting life, Aaron. Your, your life is very interesting, brother. Yeah, shut up, man. We talking about you, jokes. <laughs> but um, so where I was going was this, man. You were you you have always had like a library of movies just ready for these executives to grab hold of you so that you can flourish it over even better than like Robert Townsend or. You know, I got more faith in I got faith in your talent and your writing, like people would probably have faith in, you know, in uh, DJ uh, whoever wrote Fridays and all of those. I forgot dude name DJ. Uh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate I appreciate it, but at the same time, it is about uh, opportunity and knowing the right people and 
you know, getting your stuff distributed, you know, and that's been my thing where it's like, uh, yeah, I got some movies in the archives. Uh, I got to, like I said, the movie you mentioned with Damon, Heaven on Seven, that's like my fifth movie. Yeah. Um, and that's from I'm in love with a crackhead to a get together. Then I did another movie, Past Due. And uh, I'm sorry, Heaven on Seven is my fourth movie. My fifth movie is a movie called Traffic Safety School that I, that I produced, written and produced after uh, Heaven on Seven. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, it's, it's content, man. I'm just, I'm just steady throwing out content, and um, you know, and I got some stuff. I, I have a vault, you know. I, I got a vault yeah. of things. Absolutely. There's a lot of stuff. We, there's a lot of stuff that we've done back in the day. Um, man, we was crewed up back then doing skits before there was the internet and all that, mm-hmm. and um, all that stuff was just in the archive, you know. Right, right, right. And and what's crazy is Hollywood is so thirsty and looking for new ideas, but they never come yeah. with the uh, to the right people. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, my biggest my, one of my big bones with the New York scene is that at one time they were going to Harvard to uh for ideas. You know, they had a comedy class in Harvard, and I'm like, man, y'all in oh, New wow. York? It's all types of super dope, <laughs> cold, cre- uh, crowd crushing comics that's all around the country. Why are you going to these super nerdy, uh, ain't never made wow. nobody laugh dudes? But then they found Conan O'Brien, right? The tall dude who had Conan. Now I remember I talked okay. to Dion, it, you know, I talked to Dion when he was when he had got on Conan's uh tour. And one of his one of the things he mentioned to me was that none of them dudes could actually handle the stage, the stage. So he would have to close out the show. Right. You know what I mean? And 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 that's a wow. that kind of reflects in where Saturday Night Live is right now. To me, it's terrible. Uh, and but we got all types of dudes who, uh, could, who could make it fantastic if if Hollywood let go of its ego and start coming to the to the I mean the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Come come on. I mean, look I, at, I think that's what made that's what made yeah that's what made Death Comedy Jam so successful. And then yeah. every show that. Follow that blueprint. What's successful from that? You know, right? Um, are they still running today? No. Um, you got. I remember when I was doing Death Comedy Jam in L.A. in '07. I did. I did the very. I did the not the last season, but the season with D.L. Hughley was hosting. Yeah. And uh, I was talking with Stan Lathan, and Stan Lathan told me he's like, man, he said this entire season of Death Comedy Jam is the cost of one episode of SNL. I was like, wow, the entire season yeah. is, is, is the equivalent of one episode of Saturday. Yeah. Like, so it's like, we don't get the budgets. We really don't get the, we can have a Saturday Night Live if, if they give us uh, an opportunity, give it some budget, give us a network slot, you know. Um, the last person they did that with was with Keenan Ivy Wayne. And that was yeah. with, with Fox. Right. And, and Keenan left Look how great because, that was. That was way better than even yeah. Saturday Night Live during them times. I remember yeah, Mad TV. Was, he, remember Mad TV he so actually was strong. Yeah. Yeah, Mad TV was good. Mad TV came out the um in Living Color, but Keenan really set that blueprint with that as far as um putting putting cats on you wouldn't even know a lot of people without keenan you know oh without a doubt without a doubt <laughs> that's good man. yeah so like i want to recreate that i want that that's yeah. what i'm that's that's what i'm doing that's that's my new venture right now to bring back in a living color um was just nothing but funny nothing but funny man you know right. how that was Right. Okay. So, man, you know what? Um, you've been fantastic with me, man. You've actually given me 45 minutes of your time right now, and I want to start. Oh, wow. that yes, it, it flew past, bro. I looked at the clock. Plus, I got something else happening over here. Uh, so, I wanna, I wanna be respectful of your time and the people that I'm around's time too. But yes, sir. I like, okay. So, there's a couple things that I want you. Um, I know that you and I had an off off the TV conversation and it was that you 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 kind of have slowed down on mentoring some of these younger comics just based on their attitudes and things like that. Most of us have. I don't even really uh, mess with them too much no more, but I think we should both change that in the near future. So looking at what's going on 
uh, in the Chicago scene and, and, you know, maybe you're not so much uh, worrying about it right now, but I, if there were two to three dudes that you have been seeing that you think could have, you know, the type of potential that you guys like you, D Ray and all of them have had, who would that be? That's the first question I want to ask you. As far as up and coming, you mean like young comedians? Yeah, cats that might not be sick five to six years in, but they but they making some 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 noise in Chicago. You might have heard yeah, their name. Well, you, yeah. If they if you, if they made you remember them, then oh, they're yes. doing something. Because that's how I look at it. If I meet a dude and be like, yeah. "Oh, we met before," then you know, what I mean, yeah. yeah. If, if you if, yeah, I I actually have a long list, but the three I would choose because if you remember, I I, I had a, I always kept a room, so I had yeah. a room where every comedian who came into the game came through my room. Yeah. Like, all the way back from Lil Rail, all the way to Just Niche and T. Murph, all them guys. Yeah. So I always had a room uh, to, to uh, provide for the young comedians. And the comedians who I remember, uh, man, definitely, like, just recently and in these few years, like Marcus Shakes. Marcus Shakes is a very funny comedian, creative, yeah. um, one of them thought-provoking comics. I, I like him a lot. And then you have Mo Good. Mo Good yeah. is you know a female comedian who just man, she a beast. She just her writing is great, you right. know, and right. her delivery is good. She, she, yeah, she's kind of like a, a young Marshall Warfield, you know, Ooh. like very funny. Right. And right. Uh, man, that, that third one, man, that that third time, it's, like I said, so many. I, I hate to, cause I hate to say something. Then it's somebody I'm leaving now, but it's. There's so many great ones, but but Chase and Mo Good, and then also uh, man, you got JG. I like JG. JG okay. is uh, I think me and you had a conversation about you uh, remembering who JG was. I think y'all. No, no, I, I, yeah, he's. I th- I don't think he's a newbie though, man. He's just one of them underrated dudes, man. That you know he got a day no, job. JG, so. no, no, JG. He he been in it for I think it's under five years now, bro. Yeah, I okay. think it's under five years. JG just um he got he, he's that old school he, he old school yeah. old school with the dives and suits yeah. he kind of got that Bernie Mac he got that Bernie Mac oh, in him and stuff one hundred percent yeah I, I, I like the dude I, I like yeah. him but it's it's a lot of cats man making their way up it's it's a lot of them and yeah. um me seeing it is just like how I know that we used to be seen as we came up it was a yeah. lot of us. You know, a lot, and, and some break through and some don't. Some yeah. some quit and some keep right. going. Right. It's, it's all about sustaining. So that's, man, and I appreciate you taking the time, man, stepping out on the uh, limb by by uh, dealing with that, man. So the last right. question, and we're going to close out on this, man. What's next for B. Cole? Oh, uh, man, right now I just got my new company going, Shot Fly Entertainment, LLC. Um, just bought some office space where I'm creating a, a film studio inside of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I got I got a, I got an entire green room. Like I, I I just I did one of the rooms just entirely green, like awesome. ceiling, floor, all walls. Yeah. Like man, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to do some magic in there. Okay, um, I'm, gonna need a, I'm gonna need an invite and a key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So then, we're gonna be doing some work, man, for sure. But yeah. also too, I'm I'm working with Leon Rogers right now on his show uh, on his show um, Late Night with Leon. Yeah. It's on Fox Soul. Yeah. It comes. I think it airs on Mondays, and right. um, I'm actually uh, one of the writers on the show for for the sketch comedy on there. He just started to uh, implement um, sketch comedy, and we're doing that right now. Okay, so, I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get in on some of that too, man. But uh, man, that's yeah, awesome. Got- you got to, and the, and the goal, the goal with that is to spin off from there and get my In Living Color. Like I said, I'm, I want to get that In Living Color. So the spin off from Leon's show would be a, a great spin off to do my my sketch comedy. Man, that's awesome, man. I'm about to, uh, I don't know how I'm going to get in on that, but I'm going to find out when y'all writing him, I'm going to come if he yeah. let me. Yeah, well, uh, just come, tell hey, me. Hey, I'm hit gonna, me up. I'm I'm gonna be on you now. Don't play. You know how I am. I'm gonna come. <laughs> you gonna be I'm like this nigga here again? You know what I'm saying? I, I'm gonna come. Oh, you know you my dude, man. You know you my dude. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So yeah, man. On that, 
I love it, brother. I'm going to let you go going about your, uh, you know, I'm going to, one of these days, I'm going to give me a nice little sack and give it to you. I, 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 I'll, I'll commit to that. I see you doing your thing. Um, <laughs> I love you, man, and, and uh, I appreciate you and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You too, Foss. Appreciate you, man. Hey, whenever you had your comedy special, you call it Aaron Foster. True and false. F O S. True and false. I love okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Hey, All right, right, later. Special. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Later.